What's up everyone? My name is Sebs and welcome to the haul of the month of May 2017. So I've got my hands on stuff for a couple of different systems and uh, I've actually got my hands on a couple of filler titles, uh, some really important titles and there's even a collector's edition in here. So we'll get started with the 8-bit stuff and we'll move up in generation from there. So uh, let's start out with Sega Master System. So recently I've started to look for more and more Master System games, and uh, this is to give myself the incentive to get my console RGB modded. So as it stands now, my collection, it's, uh, it's still small, but I've garnered some cool titles, and uh, today, unfortunately, I only got some filler titles for the system. But let's, uh, let's go through them anyways. First off, we got a very beat up box of uh, Slapshot. A hockey game that I have not tried yet and as you can see the box is very busted up but I actually don't mind because I bought this and World Cup it Italia 90 uh, I got both of these for like two bucks uh, which I don't think is like anything so uh, I'm pretty happy with that and except for uh, these two uh, filler titles yeah it's not that fun to watch I found four loose cards too. One Wimbledon, one Quartet, one Psycho Fox, and last but not least, one Casino Games. And uh, as I've said, that's a bunch of filler titles for the system, but it's it's getting my, my collection a little bit beefier and I like that. So I found two NES games online, the first being uh, Bugs Bunny's Birthday Blowout, and the second being Little Nemo, the Dream Master. And uh, if we take a look at the boxes right here, I'd say the quality is not the best, but it's in an acceptable condition. I mean, yeah, it's a little bit flaky and all that, but then again, I actually didn't pay that much for these games. Other than the boxes, I'd say Bur Bugs Bunny's Birthday Blowout accepted a little bit of a flake right here on the... Uh, the card, I'd say it's, it's in an acceptable condition. And if we take a look at Little Nemo right here, the only fault I can find is the peeling of the label right up here. But as I said, I barely paid anything for him, so I don't mind. So next up, we're doing a jump from the third generation of home consoles all the way to the fifth generation, and more specifically to the original PlayStation. So, most of you watching probably figured out that I'm a huge fan of the Final Fantasy games. I've even got a Moogle tattooed on my leg, so yeah, you might call me a fan. Anyways, the reason why I'm talking about my Moogle is the two games that I acquired this month for the original PlayStation. The first being Final Fantasy VIII, and the second, Final Fantasy IX. The latter being my favorite RPG title on the original PlayStation. And with these two titles acquired, I actually have all three numeral titles on the original PlayStation, and I'm two steps closer to uh, a full Final Fantasy collection. And if we take a look at the games right here, I'd say, uh, except for the little crack right here, let's put this one down, little crack right there, and a small crack on the back side. Other than that, this is in perfect condition. Both the CDs and the manual are in perfect perfect condition. So let's take a look at all four. I actually love the artwork on uh, the CDs in this one. Oop. Crap. Just like every single freaking PlayStation 1 game, the teeth or whatever you can call them that hooks the CD don't really work anymore. So let's just be careful. There we go. And let's take a look at the disc three and four right here. It's a Freaking lovely looking uh, box art on it, or well, cover art, or whatever you can call it. Anyways, move back to Final Fantasy VIII. There's actually a little bit of sticker goo on the sides of it right here, and somehow the backside is upside down, so I actually have to pop this one open and flip it. Anyways, just like the other one, the teeths on uh, this one is not really that good, so I'm, I'm gonna take it easy while, while lifting this up. The manual has seen its better days, but it's still it's still fine, I'd say. You can read through it and everything, so uh, no complaints there. And let's be careful while doing this. 
Both CDs right here are actually pretty good looking, and the cover art is not as good as on Final Fantasy IX, but I still like it on this one. And let's hold safe here in place right there, and that's the CD3 and 4 for Final Fantasy VIII. There we go. So, my friend Max, uh, you might remember him as the hashtag abuser in my uh, Pokemon Go video that I released last year. Hashtag big boss, high level noob. So, recently Max visited his parents, and uh, while he was there, he was actually going through his old stuff, and he found a pile of N64 boxes, and since he's not a collector, and he doesn't even have an N64 anymore, he passed along the boxes to me. So, starting off, he actually gave me a box for Banyu Tui, and uh, there's a manual, there is a, it's a perfect condition box, and the insert is still in there and everything, the only thing I'm missing is actually the game. And this is a bad thing, because this is a game that's rare in two senses, it's made by Rare, and it's a rare game to find, so uh, I have my work cut out for me. Next up, we got another rare game. It's Donkey Kong 64, and uh, he actually gave me both the manual and the box for this one. And I already had this game since before, so uh, now I actually have a complete set. Next up, he gave me a box for my copy of Super Smash Bros. for the N64, and... The uh, funny thing with this one is I already have the game, now I'm only missing the manual from having a complete set. And last but not least, and unfortunately a little beat up, but Max gave me a box for Zelda Ocarina of Time, and the manual is still inside. Even the insert is still inside, so uh, I'm just, I just need to pop my game in here and I have a complete set of this one. Next up, we're moving into the sixth generation of home consoles and we're taking a look at two Resident Evil games. The first one being Resident Evil Zero for GameCube. With Resident Evil Zero, they actually tried out a couple of new things and uh, some of them actually worked out. For example, they had two main characters in this game and with the push of a button you can switch between them, giving Capcom really cool opportunities to tell a story when the main characters were separated from each other. Other than that, they actually ditched the uh, item box and uh, instead they let you put items on the floor. This turned out terrible, because let's say you had to move from one save room to like two save rooms past that point. You actually had to like pick up the items, move them over there and drop them on the floor and this was, this was just a, too big of a hassle. This happened more than once during the game and it was fucking bullshit. Anyways, let's, let's take a look at the cover here, except for a few scratches on uh, the surface, and I'd say they're barely noticeable. This is in perfect condition. And so is actually both the manual and the CDs. Except one very irritating part, and that is this fucking sticker right there. I hate when game, plays, when game stores put stickers on the CDs, or when they put the void stickers that leaves behind a residue that's like impossible to get off. And the second Resident Evil title, this being Resident Evil Outbreak for the PlayStation 2. Now, this is Capcom's first try at an online Resident Evil gameplay, and uh, unfortunately, this was not working in Europe. There was no online gameplay in Europe, but the single player mode works fine. So basically this game is all about choosing a survivor from a pool of survivors, each with their own skills and special abilities, and then you play through the game like any other Resident Evil game. Out of all the Resident Evil games, and I've played most of them, this I actually haven't tried at all, so uh, I can't wait to slap this into my PlayStation 2 and actually give it a try. I just have to find a memory card first. Alright, so I have two more items to show you guys today, and first off, for the PlayStation 3, Nino Kuni and the Wrath of the White Witch. Now, this is without a doubt, in my opinion, the best JRPG in the last couple of years, and uh, unfortunately, I could only find it in the Essentials Edition, but 
I actually acquired the Wizard's Companion book, or whatever you call it, a while back. So, I can feel a little bit better about that one. So, we've reached the last item of the day, and the biggest item of the day. This being the new Fire Emblem game for the Nintendo 3DS, Fire Emblem Echoes, Shadows of Valentia, and I probably said that wrong in some way. But never mind that, let's get this puppy opened. So since I don't have a table easily available today, I went ahead and I uh, opened everything and I put it right here in front of me so I can easily show it to you guys. So sorry, no real unboxing today, but I will still show you guys everything inside. So starting off, you got this little box right here on top of everything, and inside you got yourself a couple of emblems, or whatever you can call them, of the original 8-bit art of uh, the characters of this game. And since this game is a remake of the old-school NES title... Shoot, they almost dropped it. Since this is a remake of the old-school NES title, they actually gave you a soundtrack for it, and... It's actually both the new soundtrack and the classic tunes from the NES games. Next up in the little pile of stuff that you got for it, it's a huge art book. Now, this has to be the biggest art book I've seen for any 3DS game, and uh, that is the reason why the box was so freaking big. So anyways, to give you a little bit of the art from Shadows of Valentia, and uh, according to me, these are some really great looking illustrations inside this one. Next up, let's see if I can put this away, there we go. Next up, the, the game was actually next up. So this was on top of the, uh, of the whole box inside of the box. And uh, if we take a look inside, you don't get a manual like... Uh, like the old school games, unfortunately, all you get nowadays is this fucking commercial, and I hate it, so, uh, away with that shit. As you can see, the game is already picked out because it's actually sitting in my 3DS right now. And the last two items of Shadows of Valentia's Collector's Edition is two amiibos of the main characters of Fire Emblem. So, first up, we got, uh, what the hell is her name? Selika, Selika, or whatever you call her. I, I still haven't played it that much, so sorry if I'm butchering the names, but uh, first up we got Selika, and she has a really, really good looking model. Except for the eyes. I don't know why Nintendo can never get the eyes right. I mean, every single one of them kind of look a little derpy. Anyways, next up is Alm, the other main character from Fire Emblem Echoes, and uh, this one I actually like. I really like the blue armor and uh, everything, so uh, this is a pretty good looking uh, amiibo. Except for the eyes. Just like the other one, the eyes look kind of derpy, and uh, that's a problem with all amiibos, unfortunately. That was it for this haul of the month. A pretty damn good month, if you ask me, and uh, a really big shout out to Max the uh, hashtag abuser for. Uh, well, you collected some really cool pieces for me, and uh, I appreciate it from the bottom of my black little heart. And uh, speaking of the collection, it's it's actually really growing at the moment. Since I filmed the uh, My Damn Game Room videos, I actually had to reorganize the shelves behind me twice. So uh, yeah, and uh, speaking of growing, so is the channel. There's more than 200 of you crazy people out there subscribing to me, and that's simply amazing. I, uh, I really appreciate it, and thank you all for, uh, for watching my insanity. Uh, I know I say this a lot, but uh, I'm having a blast doing this, and I hope you all are having some fun too. I will see you all in the next video. Peace out.